Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Um, I was away for a while, um, longer than I expected, but I'm back now and I'm very excited to make videos again. Today I want to talk to you about a book, Vita Nostra by Marina and Sergei Diachenko, translated by Julia Mate of Hersey. This is going to be a spoiler-free review, so if you haven't read the book, you are free to stay for the duration of the video. I don't remember exactly where I heard about this book, but I do remember that I thought it sounded interesting and I put it on my TBR. And then I was watching um, Elias from Elias Reads talk about his... I think it was his favorite books of all time, and he listed this book. And I don't even remember what he said, but I do remember that the way he described it, that was it for me, I knew I had to read this book. So the story takes place in a post-Soviet Russia and it's about Sasha, our main protagonist, who goes on a vacation with her mother and there she sees a man, Farid Korzhenikov, who keeps following her around and she keeps avoiding him, obviously, but eventually they end up um, talking and he gives her these tasks that she has to do and when she does them she throws up coins and after doing these tasks for a while she finds out that she has been accepted into the Institute of Special Technologies and it's a school that not many people have heard of and it is in a small town that uh, also not many people have heard of and Sasha still decides to go and when she arrives there she discovers that things that they are learning don't really make sense. <laughs> and I would stop here with the summary because I think you should go into this book not really knowing much about it. Now I want to warn you and tell you that you should not expect a great plot or super interesting lovable characters, because neither is really that important for this book. Plot-wise, not much happens, honestly. I mean, there obviously the story has to move forward, so there are things that happen, but it's not really an elaborate plot. Uh, the majority of the book takes place in this small town, uh, in this school, and as far as characters are concerned, they aren't, well, at least I wouldn't say that they're very flashed out, apart from Sasha, maybe. So all the other people that she meets, the students, the professors, you really won't, you know, fall in love with the characters or find your new favorite character in this book. So Sasha and maybe a couple of other characters are a bit more flashed out because they are important to the story, but Again, the characters and their development are not as important. So this story is very... it's very philosophical and mysterious and atmospheric. So as far as the mystery goes, as I said, the things that they learn in this school aren't, you know, what you would usually <laughs> learn in a school. They don't really make sense, especially at first. and. Since we are following Sasha as the main character, everything that she knows we know and everything that she doesn't know we don't know either, so we are discovering things along with her and as the story goes you are, you're just getting these little bits and pieces of information and you just, you know, things are building up to something and it creates this sort of a feeling of suspense and the more you read, the more you want to know where it all leads. So that's something I really loved about this book. And I think more than anything, um, the atmosphere is very important for this story because, you know, you're in this small town where there aren't many people in this school that's very weird to say the least and you don't know what's happening, you don't understand most of the things and it really does create this sort of very mysterious, chaotic atmosphere that transports you into this small town in Russia and did I say that it was set in Russia? It's set in Russia by the way. <laughs> 
Another thing I would like to mention is that this book does have some dark academia vibes because obviously it's set in an academic environment and even though it doesn't deal with subjects that maybe some other dark academia books deal with like, you know, classics and philosophy, it still does give off this dark academia vibe so if you're into that and if you would like to read a dark academia book that's not set in England or the US, maybe pick this one up. Another thing that I would like to mention concerning this book is the themes that it explores. So a lot of people mentioned, and I think the, I think the summary on the back of the book says, yes, the, that the school uses terror and coercion to keep students in line. And that is very true. It does really explore how fear is used to control people but it also explores the connection between fear and love. So as much as this book is, you know, very out of this world, at the same time it deals with things like fear and love. And these are all emotions and experiences that we all have to deal with. But anyway, I've been reading and watching different reviews and the, there really are so many interpretations of this book and its ending especially because ending is a bit of mind-blowing. <laughs> You can really interpret this book any way you want to because, I mean, I guess the authors obviously had their own idea of what this book is supposed to be and with other books, it usually the readers do interpret the book in, in the same way but with this one, I think there's much more freedom uh, to interpret it in your own way. I think that's all I want to say about this book. I would highly, highly recommend that you pick this book up and at least try to read it because I know it's not really... it's not everyone's cup of tea. But I still think everyone can get something out of it. So yeah, that's it. Um, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next Monday. Bye!